moments are ticking away here. We must be with we must be less than three minutes now. Please. And uh, James Burke, I see down in down in Cheltenham, has uh, not really got one of his most complex or complicated pieces of machinery there. How are things going down there, James? Well, it's getting pretty feverish. The, we're getting a nod down there, and it looks like about under three minutes to go. Most of the most of the <laughs> cards have gone back in, and they're lying up on the candidates' tables. So we, we're very close to it now, and they're pushing hard to get the result out first, as they said they would down here, Cliff. Well, let's have a, let's have a try at Salford then. We're, we're, we're really keeping our eye on this. One thing before you go to Salford, incidentally, in Glasgow, a man was arrested after complaints by another person that he had tried to vote for a second time under another name. Uh, and another one at Plymouth, a man was arrested because he wanted to set fire to his ballot paper as a protest. Uh, we are not going to tell you what he was protesting about because it doesn't tell us what he was protesting about. Let's go to Salford West now, Harold Williamson. Well, I'm afraid, Cliff, it's going to be another five minutes. That's the, ah. uh, the latest forecast. We were flying a kite, I'm afraid, but five minutes' time, they say, the results in South and West. Harold Williamson. I seem to have seen all this before, you know, in other, in other elections where people are going to declare, keep, people are going to declare with a couple of minutes. We have no from Alan Watson here, who sits on my right in the parliamentary desk in this little bit. Uh, Alan, we've got uh, three members we're waiting to hear about now, Douglas Dodds-Parker, David Howell and Stanley Orme, in those three constituencies. Yes, indeed, all very different men. Uh, Stanley Orme, one of the rebels of the Labour Party. Uh, uh, Dodds Parker, the tallest man in the House, to give you one random piece of information about him. But, of course, David Howell at Guildford, a man very important to the Conservative Party and the new image of the Conservative Party. Incidentally, I've been smiling a little sceptically while we've been talking about polls, because I've been remembering that um, the member for Kensington North, the retiring member, incidentally, George Rogers, had, a, had his own way of uh, deciding what the polls were going to say, and that was that his wife communicated with the spirit world. I've just got a little piece of information. This isn't from the spirit world, yes. but the, the, the Tories are reporting in, uh, uh, in Guildford that, in fact, they've got an increased percentage of the poll. This is what they're saying. Uh, well, of course, the, they had a majority of over 8,000 last time. These are the first indications that are coming in on, on grapevines that seem to spread out their tentacles. I think it'd be rather surprising if they didn't have a slightly increased percentage of the poll, because nobody really, in the light of today's polls, expects the Labour Party to be back with an increased majority. They're back with a decreased majority. Every Conservative should have a slightly increased majority, I'd have thought. We're keeping our eye on these uh, three places the while because uh, any moment at all we should either get Guildford or we should get Salford or we should get Salford in about three minutes, uh, Guildford in about a couple of minutes I think and uh, the latest thing I've got now, they're, they're all about together so we're going to have the most ghastly crash. <laughs> Robert McKenzie. Well, I've been thinking back to that uh, Gravesend poll and wondering just whether we've been able to have a breakthrough by getting the result uh, a bit earlier. I'd be surprised myself if the Gravesend was better than the average of the five polls. If we've done better, we really had a rather spectacular achievement uh, on this occasion. Because after all, these polls were taken up to a day or two before the occasion. And uh, with the 25%, 24% refusal rate to respond, I think Gravesend may be a bit chipped in its advantages. Robert McKenzie, a great many people are like me, and I said earlier in this program that these polls have varied wildly. They've been from 2% for the Conservatives up to 12 and goodness knows what for the Labour. I mean, people really don't understand this. Well, I've been saying all along... That I'm saying I don't understand sure. it. Okay, what I'm each saying. lead figure is subject to a plus or minus six variation for possible error, and the pollsters themselves admit that, but it rarely appears... Right, we're going to Guildford. We're going to Guildford. I'm sorry, sorry, Bob, I'll come back to you in a moment. We're going to Guildford. Feverish activity at Guildford. As people drop little bits of paper. Dennis Tui, what goes on? I can now announce the number of votes cast in the Guildford constituency for each candidate is as follows. David Howell, Conservative, 27,203. Patton Smith, Labour, 13,108. Michael Wharton, Liberal, 8,822. The High Sheriff will shortly be proceeding to the outside of the Civic Hall to make the official declaration that Mr Howell has been elected. Could I have a candidate? Should I do it? Well, that, that, would, 
If the, if, the whole, if the whole country behaved like Guildford, that would be a 4% swing to the Conservatives, and that would mean, more or less, a dead heat between the parties, just the same as the little less than the Gravesend figure and, on the first estimate that we have got. And second, Ed, second it, oh, I thought, thought the sofa were about to declare, men went and, and opened their mouths at microphones, and I closed yours. My well, apologies. I was only going to say that, Graves, uh, that uh, Guildford had been, of the early results, the best indicator in the last five, three elections. It's better, it has a better record than any of the others we're going to have in the next 20 minutes as an indicator of what's going to happen. So we really are in for a very long, tight night, I think. From the new cathedral and the new... Uni university around Guildford and the member back in. Let's go up to Salford and Harold Williamson. It's a magnificent job. Yes. It should be an example of the nation, and I congratulate you. Secondly, I would thank the police. That's David Howell, if I ever saw David Howell in all my, uh, in all my life. Quick word, I think, Alan, because I don't think Salford are yet ready. No, I don't think they are. David Howell... Um, no, we're going to Cheltenham. Here we are. Cheltenham, Cheltenham now. Sorry. Ross Parker. Cheltenham, second half. Hereby declare that the number of votes cast for each candidate was as follows. Dudley George Aldridge, 8,431. Arthur Douglas Dodds Parker, 22,823. Leslie George Godwin, 14,213. So, L Labour have dropped considerably Audibly. here Audibly. in Guildford. Dodds Parker, Conservative, the winner by 8,610 votes. Order, please. I also declare that Arthur Douglas Dodds Parker has been duly elected to serve as Member of Parliament for Cheltenham. That's... Another Tory government. Thank you, Cheltenham. First again. Dodds Parker there with a quadrupled majority from the last election. David. I would say that was about a 6% swing. I haven't got the exact figures yet, but I think that does indicate a big thing. The swing there is exactly 6% uh, to the Conservatives, and Cheltenham was next best after Guildford of all the next 10 results. So we've had two results in from the best predictors. Their average swing is 5%, which would give the Conservatives a working majority if it were reflected in all the other results we're going to have from all the other areas of the country as the night goes on. In the heat of the moment, I think James Burke suddenly translated himself from Cheltenham to Guildford. Uh, I, I think it's perfectly well understandable. We'll be yelling at him, Guildford, Cheltenham, Salford, all night. Uh, and he suddenly, <laughs> with a slip of the tongue, said he was in Guildford. In fact, that, 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 that was Cheltenham. Yes, indeed. That very tall figure was unmistakably Dodds Parker. And Cheltenham result now. There it is. There are the figures. <clears throat> Cheltenham showed a 75% turnout which was only down 1.4 from last election and a 6% swing to the Conservatives. The Liberal got... Uh, Liberal did save his deposit, I think, just a moment. Yes, 18% of the... It got 18% of the vote. So he only just... Yes, he did. He, he saved, comfortably he saved, saved, saved it all right. He saved it quite comfortably. Robert McKenzie, let's quickly translate this onto your... Well, of course, this is sensational. The opinion polls were talking about a 1.5% swing to the Conservatives. We've been getting five and six percent in these first two results. In other words, if they are confirmed later, it's a wide open question, if they're confirmed later, then the Conservatives have broken three through the 4.3 percent swing they had to get to be sure of a working majority. David says, on his reckoning, these are two good predictor seats. Much too early to say with confidence, but if it happens all over the country, the Conservatives achieved what the polls said they wouldn't achieve, namely the kind of breakthrough they needed to get a Conservative majority. The whole thing becomes very exciting indeed now, Cliff. Well, it comes very exciting because uh, I think another, another one ought to be coming up very soon now. And uh, as soon as we can get out of uh, Harold Williamson up there in Salford, perhaps uh, his three minutes is taking an awful long time. When I come to work it out, his three minutes is extended <laughs> to nine. <laughs> I, don't know, uh, I think counting officers rather, rather lose track of, uh, of clocks like we do. Let's go to Salford now and Harold Williamson. So, uh, Harold. I, the undersigned... Being the returning officer for the constituency the right above now. mentioned, hereby give notice that the total number of votes given for each candidate at this election was as follows. 
Albert Edwin Clark, Conservative, 14,310. Stanley Orme, Labour, 16,986. And that Stanley Orme has been duly elected to serve as a member for the said constituency. Well, David. I'm sorry, I missed on that one. Well, I'll give you the figures. Stanley Orme, 16,986. Yes. Uh, Albert Clark, 14,310. That was a 4.9% swing to the Conservatives in Salford, which has always been uh, uh, sometimes varied. In 1959, it misled us. But a 4.9% swing is more than is enough needed to return the Conservatives to power. There was a 65% poll there, which was down 1.5 on last time. I, I believe Stanley Orme's majority there was halved, certainly. Yes. Mm. It was down a long time. I, I think in just a moment we really ought to try and get hold of Graham Pied over there, who's uh, got a, a ton of computer stuff coming out. Now, we've got one, two, three. Have you been able to put these into your computer yet, or has it said anything? Yes, indeed. The computer has been making predictions as the results have come <coughs> in. Uh, at this stage, they're no more reliable than simply computing the national average swing, uh, which is now running at uh, a little over 5%. Uh, on that basis, we would have a, a Conservative majority over Labour of about 53 seats. But, of course, there's a great deal of uncertainty associated with that. I think, well, there's a certain amount of uncertainty. I think we ought to go to Robert McKenzie now. I'm, I'm keeping an eye, uh, Robert, incidentally, on Wolverhampton because we're expecting that. But a quick word about that, I think. Well, three results, average swing so far on these first three of just over 5% to the Conservatives, which would point to a 50-seat Conservative majority overall. Three results only. They're not definitive, of course, but it is a, a complete overturn of everything said by the average poll prediction, which was down here. So we are really in a very exciting situation now. It's very exciting indeed, I may say. We're, we're still keeping our eye on the two Wolverhampton declarations up there. Uh, nothing really seems to be happening at the moment. It, it looks as though they're, they're all done and the computer suggests that the Conservative overall majority after three results is... No. Oh, it's the order of 53 seats. You're, I, I was looking at you. I'm very I'm sorry. sorry about that. I'm <laughs> a very bad pardon. orchestra leader. <laughs> I ought to have waved my wand at you and you would have been up. About 53 seats is what the computer is saying at the moment, but uh, with the proviso that it could go to, I, either way from there. Now here's the full result from Guildford. This is uh, David Howell's seat, as I was saying. It's got the Cathedral University. David Howell, member here since 66. Yes, David Howell, a person who's stood absolutely for the kind of conservatism that Mr. Heath has been attempting to project both in this campaign and before it. Uh, a modern conservative, a man very much on the liberal wing of his party, a man who's been saying throughout this campaign that what Britain needs is a change in the style of government. Uh, let's now take a look at the Salford West. There are the confirmation figures of that. 5% swing, on double, double check to 5% swing, 65% turnout. Uh, yes, it's Stanley Orme, one of the top half dozen rebels against the, his own leadership in the last parliament, one of the leaders of the Tribune group of MPs who meet on Monday every week to coordinate their own left-wing strategy inside the House and inside the Parliamentary Labour Party. This is the time of every general election results programme when politicians either begin to smile or smirk or not quite know how to look at Robin Day out there. Robin. <laughs> and uh, here, up uh, above the uh, great circus down there, we have the notorious or famous plasticine puppets of the Tory leaders, named by the Labour Party yesterday's men. Are they going to be tomorrow's men. With me, Edward Ducan, former chairman of the Tory party and a candidate himself in this election at Taunton. Well, what do you think of the uh, results, uh, Mr Ducan? Splendid. Absolutely first rate. I'm delighted, of course. So I, are we all. I had a feeling you might say that, uh, but uh, do you think that uh, they're going to continue in this way? No, I think there will be substantial regional variations. We've always been expecting to do very well in the southwest, for example. I think we shall win two seats there. There'll be fluctuations all over the place. Um, what, what has been your own experience in campaigning? Well, I've been if down If you can in try the... to give a, an objective account. Well, it's always very difficult. Yes, I think I can, because I've been right down in the front row of the scrum. And, of course, you don't see the campaign, you don't see the whole of the game. But you do have a tremendous amount of fun. 
I think the points that have been chiefly made to me, though, by observers whose views I trust, is how angry they've been at the